My name is Dana Smith. I live in Hartwell, Georgia. I decided to volunteer to be a poll worker to help out with the election that was held at the uh, Hart County Recreation Center in Hartwell, Georgia on November 3rd. And we went in the day before and set up all the electronic machines and got everything ready with all the locks and seals and everything still in place. All of that was good. When we came back at six in the morning on election day, the building was freezing cold. Um, we'd been down in the thirties uh, that morning and someone called an HVAC person to see if they could get the heat going. Around noon, finally, an HVAC repair person came in. I said, oh, did you get the heat working? Because I was um, functioning as a greeter at that time. And he said, um, actually, there's nothing wrong with the heater. I don't understand it. Someone has turned off the gas, you know, turned off the gas to the building. And I don't know, I don't understand why they did that. But yeah, it's turned back on and it's working now. And I didn't think anything of that part of it until the next day. And I discovered that the voter machines are supposed to be kept in a climate controlled environment. And so that worried me a lot because someone had shut off the gas to the building and there's no alarm system or, or anything that tells you if the machines have come out of compliance. So at the end of the night, um, after the reports were run and the um, printer tapes were printed, then it's time to empty out all those paper ballots um, in those um, scanner bins. And there's a procedure for that. And there are several witnesses there while you do it. And you're kind of scooping up hundreds of ballots all, you know, turned sideways and mismatched in there. And, and we were placing them in these special red canvas bags. They had these special zippers that would accommodate a special pronged plastic numbered lock that would seal and protect all of those paper ballots since that's the backup if there's a problem with the electronic voting machines. We got all the paper ballots into the two big red ballot bags and they're, they're marked. They each have a card that marks what scanner they come out of. And that was there, that was fine. But what wasn't there are the special locks, the numbered plastic locks that seal the zippers on those canvas bags holding all those paper ballots. Then those uh, red special bags are supposed to go into these blue canvas totes and also be sealed with plastic numbered um, locks. And so it's like a double seal protection. If the locks are broken, you'll be able to know that someone got into the paper ballots and perhaps maybe tampered with them or something. So our supervisor, Sarah, said that we didn't have any of those locks. We had everything else throughout the night except for um, the, the paperwork for the poll watcher and the locks to protect the paper ballots. So I told her, you need to call Robin down at the election office and have someone bring down the special plastic numbered locks for these um, bags because they need to be sealed. And she kind of ignored me. And then she said, just, just pack them up unsealed. And I said, uh, I'm not going to do that. You need to call Robin and you need to have her bring down the seals, you know, the locks so we can seal these up. Uh, that's not acceptable. Eventually someone came with those locks. We sealed up those two red bags from the scanners. Also, we sealed up the red canvas bag that held the provisional ballots that had happened that night. Those also needed to be sealed. We got those on and I asked the supervisor for the paperwork to document the numbered locks on the bags. And she said, we don't have to do that. We don't have any. And I said, why on earth would we seal up these, you know, 
bags with all the paper votes and not have any paperwork on it? Why are we not protecting the very most important thing of the night, the, the voters' paper ballots? We have to write down the number locks. That's, it doesn't make any sense. We're, we're sealing and protecting every other thing, but not their ballots. Um, and she said, you know, we're busy, it's late, I wanna get home. Um, she made it clear that I was uh, being unreasonable and she, um, she, didn't, she wasn't gonna write it down. I said, well, you're writing down the, the, the serial numbers on the bags indicating which scanners they came from. Can't you just write down the lock numbers on the same paper and two witnesses will sign it? And she rolled her eyes at me and was angry and she got up and walked off and said to the other people there, just, just close them up and load them up. Just do it and walked away. We, ha we set up a meeting for the very next morning to talk to our local election officials, Gary Hamilton and Robin Webb were the people we would be meeting with, the poll watcher, myself, and um, Bill Fogarty from um, the local GOP because I wanted to um, tell them what had happened. Robin, the local election worker said that she's who had told Sarah to go ahead and bring, bring, the, bring the paper ballots unsealed to the office. Gary, who's the chairman of our board of elections, he was super defensive and was lecturing us on um, you know, the law and that they had complied with the law. And he said that um, those ballots didn't need to be sealed um, and that really who's gonna get in there and mess with them and what difference would it even make if a couple paper ballots disappeared, that it wouldn't affect an election in any way. And that really disturbed me because I feel like his job is to protect every single person's vote and for him to say that really upset me, that it wouldn't matter if a couple paper ballots did disappear in the car on the way over. That bothered me a lot. The GOP wanted me to, they were trying to find somebody to be a poll watcher during the paper counting of the ballots on Friday the 13th, November 13th. So I sat down and um, realized that the paper ballots that they were bringing in weren't in the canvas bags that I had sealed on election night. They were in cardboard boxes, file boxes. When they opened the boxes, all these ballots are stacked neatly in there and organized. So clearly someone had handled them because they weren't in the canvas bags anymore. And they weren't just in there randomly like we had put them in on election night at the polling station. They were all neat and orderly in these cardboard boxes that were quote sealed that weren't the same number seals that I had put on and no chain of custody or other paperwork documenting that, none. So someone had been in them. I don't know what they were doing but they certainly weren't still sealed from when I sealed them on election night. Um, those seals were gone, the canvas bags were gone, and instead were these cardboard boxes with red tape on them and some uh, little tape number stickers, but those mean nothing because someone handled all of those ballots. They, they were not uh, as I had seen them on election night. The list of things that concerned me I, you know, I decided to be a poll watcher because I love my country and I have time. And, and on election night, I saw these people come in to vote. There was a blind man that was brought in by his wife to vote. There were families. There was a man in an electric wheelchair that came in to vote. And those people, they became my voters to protect. And, and it really bothers me that all those people that came in think that their vote was secure and I don't even care who they were voting for. It bothers me that their vote might not have been protected. And it's hard for me to sleep thinking about it. Um, it just, it's awful.